Assalamualaikum and hi to everyone. Thank you for watching this video. So in this video, we'll discuss about several questions for our test revision. Okay. So this answer for question part A, based on the revision question that I already give to you, uh, you can check your answer. Number 1 is A, number 2 A, number 3 B, number 4 B, number 5 A, number 6 c number seven is d number eight is b nine is b and ten is e so most of the question is uh most of the question are theoretical questions so supposedly refer to the uh, reference book and the lecture note you're able to answer the question so next we go for part b okay part b is short i see so question number one the question asks to define a multiplexing technique. So in this part, you need to give a definition of multiplexing technique. So multiplexing is a set of techniques that allow the simultaneous transmission of multiple signals across a single data link. So that is the definition of the multiplexing. It means you have multiple resources that you can share the resources in a single link when you want to transmit the frame or the data. For B, question number B, describe the goal of multiplexing. What is the purpose of the multiplexing technique? What is the objective of this kind of technique? So you need to uh, describe, explain what is the goals of the multiplexing. Why multiplexing technique is being introduced. Okay, The goals of multiplexing are to utilize the bandwidth that available in the network and to achieve the efficiency in data transmission process. So that's part. Uh, the purpose is, the benefit is to utilize the available bandwidth that we have in our network. And then to achieve the efficiency in data transmission process or what we can say to uh, speed up the process of transmission uh, or to make it uh, to reduce the cost of transmission the data instead of we have multiple channel multiple cable that we need to transmit now we use the multiplexing technique we can combine all the uh, data from several resources into a single link and transmit the data to the receiver side okay so when we talk about the goal is also the benefit and the advantages of this kind of technique in the data communication okay the next question we have question number two you are given the situation that we have six channels and we need to multiplex those channels each of the channel occupy 100 kilohertz and between the channels there is a need of 20 kilohertz for guard band Okay, identify the total bandwidth for guard bands and the minimum bandwidth of the link. So you need to know what is the total bandwidth needed uh, for the channel as well as for the guard band. Why we need the guard band? Because we want to avoid the interference between signal uh, between signal that come from several channels. Okay, now we have six channels. So one channel occupy 100 kilohertz. So that means, let's say this is your channel. So you have six, each contain 100 kilohertz. So now you have 600 kilohertz. Okay, include the guard band. So between the channel, there is a need of 20 kilohertz. So when we have six channel, so the guard band we have between the channel one. Sorry, uh, one, two, three, four, and five. So total guard band is equal to five. Each guard band equal to twenty kilohertz. So twenty kilohertz time with five, you get hundred. So total guard band is hundred kilohertz. Total bandwidth needed for six channel is equal to six hundred plus with the guard band 
hundred, so it's equal to seven kilohertz. So that is the bandwidth that we need in order to multiply those six channels. Okay, next question, question number three. This question also refer to the multiplexing. Okay, based on the question, okay, we have four channels, and we need to multiplex these four channel using the TDM. Each of the channel send hundred bytes per second, and we want to multiplex two bytes per channel. Okay, the question asks to show the size of frame that traveling on the link. The frame rate, the duration of frame, the bit rate, and the bit duration. Okay, bit rate is equal to data rate. Bit duration is equal to data duration. Okay, so based on the question, you can figure out that we have four channels. So we have four channels. Okay, in this case, one channel send 100 bytes. So we have 100, 100, 100, and 100 bytes. Okay, we want to multiplex two bytes. Two bytes from each channel. So we have four channel. We multiply two byte, two byte, two byte. So total here we have eight bytes. One, two, three, four. Four times two equal to eight bytes. So in one frame or in a frame we have eight bytes. So one byte is equal to Eight bits. So that's mean if we have eight bytes, so we need to eat times eight. So equal to 64 bits. So this is size of frame. Okay. The size of the frame traveling on the link is eight bytes. If the question said that including one bit for synchronization. So that's mean you need to add another bit here. But in this kind of question, there is no synchronization bit. So we stick on the uh, 2 times 4 equal to 8 bytes. So 64 bits. So this is the size of a frame. Okay. How many frames that we can generate? We have 100. We want to multiply 2 from each channel. So that's mean 100 divided by 2 equal to 50. So that's mean when we multiply together, we will generate 50 frames that will travel in this link. Okay. So you need to identify the frame rate frame rate is 50 frames per second so in one second you will have 50 frame how about the frame duration frame duration is one over total number of frame so one over 50 second okay next is a bit rate okay bit rate is equal to data rate so bit rate in bit Okay, we know that one frame is equal to 64 bits. So we have total 50 frame. So uh, 64 bits time with 50 frames, then equivalent with 3,000. Uh, 32,000. Uh, 33,200. Okay. So. Uh, the measurement unit is in bit per second. So it means when we have 3200 bits per second. And bit duration is equal to 1 over the bit rate. Okay. Frame duration 1 over the frame rate. Bit duration 1 over the bit rate. Okay. That's for the multiplexing. Okay, uh, this one is for the normal part. Okay, let's see. Uh, the question asks about the character. Okay, you need to assume that in your mind, when we talk about the character, one character equal to 8 bit. So let's say the question asks for 
100 characters. So that means we have 100 times 8 bits. So equivalent to 100, uh, 800 bits. So one character equal to, uh, you can assume that one character equal to 8 bits. Okay. We go for the next part. Okay, question number four, part B. You need to draw the difference between data element and single element. Okay, this is the drawing that you should draw. Okay, any one of these diagram will give you three mark. So you need to know, uh, identify what is the data element and what is the single element. So here is the data element. Okay, this one is the single element. So one data element in two single element. Okay, this one two data element in one single element. And this one we have four data element in uh, one single element. Oh, sorry. So the, the, the data between this one. So we have one, two, three. Three single element carry out four data element. So you just need to... A differentiate between the data element and the signal element. Okay, next part is about the uh, draw the pattern. Okay, we go for the first part is an RZL. Okay, you are given a stream of bit 10100111101. So, using the following digital encoding schemes, be sure to write down any assumption you need to make. So, any assumption, you need to assume that it starts with positive, so you start with positive. Start with negative, so you can put start with negative. Depends on your assumption. So, in this uh, part, the encoding is NRZL. So, in RZL, okay. 1 is negative, 0 is positive. So you put 1 negative, 0 positive, 1 negative, 0 positive, positive, negative, 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 positive, negative. Okay, this one for an RZL. Okay, next, uh, the digital scheme is Manchester. Uh, so in Manchester, you need to know that when the number is 1, so it looks like this one. Okay, this is the pattern for 1. For 0, it looks like Z. Okay, 0 like Z. 1, uh, Z terbalik. Okay, so you have a bit of stream 10100111101. So, you can assume it's positive signal. Uh, so, positive start with this positive. And then number one, the pattern is like this one. And then after that, it means zero. So, continue with this pattern. One, so you need to continue with this pattern. Zero, continue with this pattern. And then zero again. So, zero, this pattern. One, this pattern. Okay, one against this pattern, once again this pattern. Okay, now zero, so Zach's pattern, and this is the pattern for number one. Okay, so next scheme, based on the revision test, is refer to the AMI, but this AMI is not covered in our syllabus. So you can ignore, but I just give the uh, solution. So for this part, uh the 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 value of one will be alternately change uh negative positive negative positive okay right. for example this one one we put as negative we assume start with negative and then zero is at the zero line so after negative we go for positive and then zero at zero line and then we meet another one so this one is positive this one we go for the negative Negative, positive, negative, zero, positive. Okay. So, we continue on the next video for the second part of uh, uh, our discussion. Okay, that's all for this video. Thank you and Assalamualaikum.